Welcome to the ATS Gear Show. I'm Kenny. And I'm Wes. And Wes is back from L.A. I'm back from L.A. So, man, give us a review of L.A. I love it. I love L.A. I was out there for about five days. We got the beach, tacos, different than Austin tacos, but very delicious. I love everything I ate out there. Good people. My, my friend and all of his friends are great people to hang out with. It's nice, man. It's sunny during the day. It's smoking cool in the shade. It's smoking legal weed. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You walk into a store and buy it. And it's no big deal. It's great. First time in 12 years that I got back to Austin and I wasn't super excited to be here. So, yeah, man. So, LA was awesome. I had to film a show while you were gone. That was awkward. Was you awkward. know, I watched it, though. I thought it came out well. It was awkward. I liked the the close-up shot of you. It was playful. It was nice. I liked it. For this week, because Wes was gone, I knew he was coming back. We we didn't have anything to film per se. Yes, we always have stuff to film, but we didn't want to waste anything on a, hey, welcome back, man. It was weird while you were gone. So I figured, uh, man, we'd just talk about our gear, dude. You guys see us play every week. We've never officially said, we put in the description what we play, but we never like sat and you see me playing like four different guitars, and but we never explained what these guitars are really and talked about them. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to talk about my gear and what we play through on the show here. And then next week, we're going to head over to Yo Joint and check out all Yo shit. Right. So next week, we'll go to my house. We'll check out my uh, pedal board that I'm using for a gig this week. It's a small version of my, oh yeah you borrowed the red of my big rig uh pedal board that i have it's a smaller version but we'll play through that and you know show you guys my guitars and everything and uh gonna run that rat through that g2 I'm gonna run you? that rat through the g2 <laughs> i really like the sound when we did that a couple of weeks ago and uh it's on my board now it's a very and controversial i gotta episode. say that rat going just through that through the vibralux set as a boost right sounds fantastic we're doing like some Rolling Stones covers and uh, with that Telecaster tuned in Open G playing that stuff with the Rat through that. It sounds phenomenal. Badass. Such a good sound. The Rat G2 here was okay. Took but, it back to my house, put it through there with the other few things that I have. The compressor, the Boss CS3 compressor, yep. and it sounds incredible. Sounds like you need to get a little flyboard that you can just... That's what I just made. Nice. I nice. use that old little case I had uh, that was doing nothing but right. collecting dust and uh, slapped it in there. And now I have a little travel case for these smaller gigs. Nice. Um, and sounds great. So awesome. be excited to check that out next week. And then this week, let's learn what you got going on let's here. Let's do it. Why don't we start with your guitars? Okay. Let's we'll just uh, bring up a guitar and tell us a little bit about it. All right. All and right. we'll go through each one. Awesome. All right, man. So... Tell us what you got going on here with this one. All right, dude. So this is probably, you'll see me probably play this guitar the most. Yeah. Because it's it's my go-to guitar. It's the one I like to play the most, the one that feels the best to me. Okay. And it's a 2015, which is a controversial year. And you'll notice in this, I have two of those. And I'll say, I will talk about it. It was a limited run special. It's a slab body, all mahogany. I love it because it's got a belly cut and I got a belly. So yeah. I hadn't noticed, but yeah, that's why I love this. Guitar. All mahogany. How, uh, how's it, how's it feel? What's the weight? Probably about eight pounds. I weighed it See? once. It was like eight and some change. I think it was. Yeah, it's pretty light. It's got burst bucker pros, coil tap. So I can go single coil if I want to, but I'll never do that because burst, uh, humbuckers in single coil mode. In my opinion, doesn't sound that great. Yeah, I've heard you do it that way a couple of times. And it doesn't, it's like, it, it doesn't, it sound doesn't like match true. a single coil of like a strat. Exactly. It sounds really sort of dull and flat. Exactly. So you mentioned uh, 2015 being a controversial year. Okay. Briefly explain. All right. So tell you what, hand me that one over there on the other side of you. So this is a 2015 special first bucket pros limited run. It's got no PCB board. It's a uh, straight, uh, traditional wiring but yeah all right so that's a 2015 but this is also a 2015 let's try to get there we go and yeah man for some reason dude people lost their in mind over the 2015 year because this guitar originally came with the robot tuner 
Oh, right. Everybody right. hated yeah. that, dude. It got like yeah. bashed. Yeah. So I put these Grovers on it. I didn't like it. I did try it. My opinion. So this one did have the. Yes. What do you think about it? I tried it, man, and I learned it, and everybody's all like, well, you didn't read the manual fully. Yes, I did. And I still didn't like it because it wasn't. I tuned, and you know, I tune, I have, I, I tune quite a bit in different tunes. And that's why I was like initially like, man, I, I might like the robot tuner because I can quickly tune to another tune. It doesn't quickly. It does, but it's not ever truly in tune. And I know you guys will say, well, mine works fine. Well, good for you. I'm glad yours works fine. This one did not. And it did read the manual and it worked it like it was supposed to work. Didn't work. Do, do, you, do you tune it or does it constantly retune? It, like, okay. does it keep you in no, tune during right, a song? You have to press the button. Like, so if you're like playing da, 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 and you're out of tune and you're like, okay, and you hit the button and you <sighs> strum like that and all the. Okay, da, 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 gotcha. That's not how guitar works. It seems like any guitar player uh, worth their salt would be like, that's a dumb idea. <laughs> that's not how guitar works. So if I say I wanted to tune this guitar to E, open E. That's going to mess with the neck tension because I'm jacking these strings way up. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would need to be set up for that tuning or it's never going to be truly intonated. Right. Is that part of the marketing rub that they, like, you can tune all these weird tunings. That was their instant. whole deal. And yeah, you can't really do that. You can't. It, you can. I mean, you can, but you're not ever going to be truly in No, tune. every time you change your strings or when you change your tuning, if the tension is different on the neck, you're going to have to set up the guitar exactly. or it's not going to be in tune all the way up the neck. All right. So another thing that everybody hated on the 2015 was they had a wider neck. The wide, It's a slightly wider neck than a traditional Les Paul. Whatever. I got um, my big hands and my hands fit this guitar fine. But yeah, that was another thing. Um, I will say about this guitar, um, I like it, but the one thing, my experience with this guitar is uh, Kenny actually gave it to me to set up for him one time, and it was impossible to get intonated all Average. over the neck. I set up all of my all of my guitars myself, and they're all in tune here and here and here with this octave and that octave. That guitar, you were either going to be out of tune at the bottom of the neck or at the top of the neck. Luckily, Kenny doesn't play a lot past the 12th fret. So I kind of just told him, hey, man, this is it's really in tune below that. But beyond that, it's just not going to work. I mean, I I played with it for hours and this bridge, this preset, um, you know, this I, what's it called? Do you know the name of that? That is a lightning bridge. This preset lightning bridge where you have to adjust the whole thing to one angle, the other, yeah. other, other. I just don't think that's a good idea. On I, I read up on you it need, more. You need individual. Um, string saddles. tension saddles yeah. for each string. Yeah. But as far as this guitar goes, I've always wanted a double cut special, basically. Always wanted it. Just, I don't know why I've always been attracted to double cut guitars. But yeah, man, got this guitar on a steel because they were like just throwing them away, man. Nobody wanted them. They were 2015. So, oh yeah, I got one. And uh, yeah, man, these P90s, they're Alnico slugs, dude. Sound. Great. They sound awesome. 2015, this is the difference between that one and that one, was this one had all the 2015 specs that everybody hate. So that's my 2015. And then uh, you'll see me playing this guitar a lot. This is I rarely see you play that guitar, and I that's one okay. of my favorite guitars here. It's like, right. it's like Slash or like Zach Wilde. It's the, a badass-looking guitar. This guitar, it, it stays in open E tuning. Uh-huh. Because I, you know... You guys don't know this about me. I, I haven't really been playing electric guitar that long. You know, man, we've been in bands for the last 10 years. But Well, you've been playing electric guitar for a long time, but you haven't seriously serious. started to try and play electric guitar until recently. I didn't know anything about effects. I didn't know any of this stuff. And, man, all you guys on social media reading all these forums, man, I learned all this stuff relatively quickly. Yeah, I've always been a singer, and every band I've always been in, I've always been just a singer. Never really played guitar much, and when I did, it would be these guitar players going, "Put the guitar back down, dude. Just sing." 
You just said. yeah, I remember going to a couple of your rehearsals and you would try to play and there was another guitar player there. I was like, man, why don't you just let that guy you just play? Just let that guy. You just sing, bro. But even like even now though, as uh, as far along as you've come, it's so hard to do both very well, and so few people do it. It's like I'm so jealous of the ones who can do it and do it. Well, it's so it's hard like, to do ah. both really well. Yep. There there aren't that many people that do, but you know, like you got a powerhouse of a voice. You guys need a singer and you're in Austin. That's the guy to go to. Um, but yeah, I mean, long way. And and a lot of times now on these videos we do, I'm like, shit, man, he's he's surpassing me. <laughs> but yeah, man, so the last few years, I've just been really hitting the guitar heavy and learning as much as I can and soaking it in like a sponge. Some um, of us got to have jobs. Some of us have to have jobs. I am very a, a lucky man. I'm just a lucky man. Is any ladies watching? I'd like to be a lucky man. <laughs> so back to this guitar. It is a 2012 Epiphone. 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 Love this guitar. I own three other Gibsons. This is an Epiphone. All you people go, Epiphone, Versa Gip. This is Epiphone. Love this guitar. It's got uh, Alnico, two humbuckers in it. No, nothing, just straight humbuckers. And uh, yeah, dude, I keep this guitar tuned in open E. And the way I play guitar, I don't play guitar to learn how to play guitar to be some virtuoso lead guitar player. I'm a singer. I use guitar as a tool. It's a writing tool. I write songs. So, yeah, I keep this guitar in open E, man, just because it sounds so badass distorted. When I hit it does. just an open E chord. Yeah, it's man. Like, you should play it on the show more often. Yeah, because yeah, you don't really play that one on the show that much. But... It's a really good sounding guitar. It's my favorite looking one of yours, but it is my least favorite of yours playing wise. Because it's an open E. It's like, not that. No, it's because the neck on oh, it is so fat. big. It yep. feels like I'm playing my Alvarez acoustic guitar. It is a fatter and neck. And for like, and, and on that guitar, especially, I'm a, a bluesier player and I right. like to bend. Bending on that son of a bitch. Well, dude, so hard. So we got like a whole step on there will work your wrist to death. You're like, Aah! so that's an eleven to fifty two. Yeah, man, they're they're heavy gauge for me. And I, I play a, I play tens. I use a wound G on everything. Every one of these guitars has a wound G just because I like wound Gs. I think they sound best to me. But yeah, all my string gauges are heavy, heavy. So yeah, man, twenty twelve Epiphone. Love this guitar. Maybe I'll play it more since you like it. All right, man. So the last guitar you'll see me play is a 2009 Studio. People bash on studios. I like them. I mean, people go, they don't have binding and they're all fancy. I'm not fancy. I'm cool with it. Burst Bucker Pros, no coil tap, anything like that. And this guitar I keep in E flat. So okay. it's a half step down. When I play like Allison Chainsy kind of sound and stuff, right, it just right. sounds best. Yeah. But uh, so that's my guitars, man. Cool. All right, man. So let's take a look at my amps and wrap this show up. All right, man. Let's talk about these amps. All right, dude. This is my Marshall DS40C. And that uh, that Marshall is modded, right? Yes, dude. So me and you modded it. So yeah, me everybody. And you, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He did all I the, modded that. He amp. did all the solder work. We'll I, cut in a close up to that. And you can see the, the toggle switch yeah. I put on the front of it. So what that toggle switch does is because the capacitor that's in the amp, people complain that with that capacitor off at low volumes, the amp sounds better, and it does. At lower volumes, if you're playing bedroom and you need more bass, and you cut that capacitor where it was not functioning, it is. It adds some body to. At lower volume, halfway up or above, you don't even know. You don't even know that cap is there or not. So, yeah, I went to this guy, man, uh, this amp, local amp tech guy, and I got a capacitor and paid a few bucks, man, and bought a capacitor. And then, yeah, brought it to your house, and we took it apart, and we installed this switch. So the switch, what we did, because I didn't want to take the amp and take Parts missing, basically, from the amp. So I wanted to keep the original capacitor. So what we did was put the original capacitor on one switch or one toggle up. And then the new cap that I got from the amp guy, which tamed the amp a little bit, it's on the bottom. And then in the middle, it's off, which right. was cool, man. So yeah. 
He yeah, yeah, so we put one on one circuit, one on the yep. other, and now you can toggle between them. Exactly. So that's that amp. I love that amp. That's it's just so loud. It's it's impractical for home use and trying to be low volume. But I like that DSL sound. It sounds like a hot rodded JCM 800. It just sounds more game. I like the yeah. more game. Right. So I decided to get a Marshall DSL 20, which is that amp. The Marshall DSL 20? Yeah, DSL yeah. 20, which is uh, the newer version where they revoiced it a little bit when everybody was complaining about these guys being too harsh or whatnot. So they revoiced this new, what they call the R series of these amps, and they revoiced it and basically smoothed out that harshness that everybody complained about, which you don't notice when you're at higher volumes, but whatever. So that's my amps. And on top of these amps, man, I run uh, in the loop and they're Velcro to the top of my amp. That's uh, a, a cheap delay. I use a Donner Yellow Fall, which is a Donner analog simple delay that I use always on, barely in the mix, enough to give me like a reverb sound. It's always on. And then an EQ that I have adjusted for the bass to be a little more present. And it's always on. And then that's pretty much, man, my setup. And then everything else in the front is just dry pedals and fuzzes or octave pedals, things, you know, just to play yeah. with. Um, well, why don't we hear you play uh, a couple of these guitars through these amps? Maybe do like the black guitar. Okay. You got any names for these guitars? Uh, I, no, they're tools. Hammer, <laughs> wrench, shovel. Um, Sawzall? Yeah. Yeah, all right. But uh, um, yeah, man, I'll run through some uh, sounds and just kind of play different, show what these guitars, what I play. Yeah, let's, uh, let's check that out. I'll get out of the shot. Uh, you can play. I'll come back and then uh, let's wrap it up. Let's do it.
there it is. That's cool, man. I'm glad we got to hear some of those guitars. You know, it's it's a cool episode to, to sit here and go through all this. Stuff. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, dude, when you guys see me playing, I mean, I'm either playing one of these two amps or one of these guitars, and now you know. One of these days, though, I'm going to convince him to sell both of those and buy himself like a 50-watt Plexi. Because I own, what was it? It was a 1972 vintage Plexi. Right. You've heard it. Is there any comparison? That was a great Let's just be, for hear. everybody out there, let's be perfectly honest. Is there any comparison? You know, all right. I wish our buddy Franco over in Poland were here, who plays the exact same amp, who designs this pedal. He plays the exact same amp as I do, and who owns a Plexi amp. And I wish he were here to chime in and go, yes, because he has talked about it, that that Plexi amp is great, and it's great. but he could buy four of these for the price of that Plexi amp and treat them however he wants and mod them. I, I and bought my Plexi. I actually bought my Plexi, believe it or not, uh, in like 2007 for 800 bucks. Yeah, go try to buy it now. Yeah, go I should have held on to it. Yeah, I sold should. it for like 1500 bucks. Exactly. To some dude that lives with uh, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan's bass player. What was his name? The dude's name? Chris Layton? Chris, Chris, no, that's Tommy, Tommy Shannon. Shannon. Tommy, Tommy Shannon. Shannon. Yeah, so I was in his house, man. It was cool. They had, like, pictures, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan's golden records all over the wall and shit. Oh, uh, awesome. But this was the guy that bought my amp. And I was like, dude, if you ever sell this amp, you have to call me first because I want to buy it back. But he played it. He's not going to sell it back to you for 1500 bucks. This guy <laughs> played it, and he said, and I quote, "It's the it was the best Marshall he's ever played. Well, let me ask you this. Did you put the other two tubes back in it? No, it was still running at 50 still watts. Yep, still handicapped. But he loved it. I mean, it was a fantastic. But, you know, the thing with those amps is that you have to crank them to yeah. like nine or ten yeah. to get that sound out of it. So, like, these amps are good. You know, Marshall has kind of figured out that, like, most of the people we're selling to aren't playing places where we can make those big hand-wired uh, amps that are super loud. They still make them, but they're expensive and they're made for people that are playing, you know, bigger right. gigs. But um, for, like... Getting that big sound in a small space, these work pretty well. But so did the Cornell. See, all right. All right. Well, that's another <laughs> show. But one day, maybe I will get me a Cornell or something. Maybe. The point being that you can get an amp that satisfies the same, like, volume gain requirement. That for costs $2,000. Uh, minus <laughs> minus 1400 bucks. And that's not bad for that amp. I get mean, rid of these amps. And buy you a more Get rid of these <laughs> amps. Well, you probably get, like, Thousand bucks for the Maybe, two of them? At the most. Yeah. Then you only got a few payments to go on getting yourself a Cornell. That was a great amp. It did that one sound, that rock sound. That one sound. I wish I'd have kept it just a little longer so that when we did this show, we could have played. It would have been great for this show. Yeah, but if you if if anybody's out there wondering what a Cornell is, go check out CornellAmplification.com. They make really cool boutique amps that Probably. are probably like Marshall Sound. Trunk down to 20 watts. Sound fantastic. It was a great sounding amp. Well, we wrap it up. Let's do it. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the show this week. Stay tuned next week where we head over to my house and we'll check out uh, my <laughs> check out my amps and my guitars and uh, play in the studio there, which, you know, the studio has a great sound. Yeah, there. it does. It's like almost like that magic sound where everybody comes in there and like, man, it's not a fancy room, but it sounds great in there. So we'll go over there and do that. And, um... Yeah, if you like our videos, subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave comments, let us know what you're thinking. If there's anything you'd like us to do, you can let us know uh, because we're half drunk, half stoned, but fully, fully reviewed. reviewed.